Okay, welcome back to the channel, everyone. This is uh, Brian here. And today we've got a new video uh, on a new mod that just recently came out uh, for Quake. I believe this is a fan made mod, it's not official. But it is. They've added path tracing to the original Quake, kind of similar to what they did with uh, Quake 2. And I gotta say, what they did is pretty pretty awesome. Uh, let's see, we're already in the campaign. And uh, right now we've got the path tracing stuff turned on. And you can actually uh, turn it off uh, on the fly by pressing the F key. So this is uh, just basically the speed call quick. And this is what the uh, path tracing uh, turned on. <coughs> Another cool thing is you can actually see through the portals now. It's pretty neat. So, now that you've seen the game in action, I can show you how to actually get it running for yourself. So, I'm going to go in here. So, I'm going to put links to these all in the description below. So, you guys will be able to download th these. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to this GitHub. And I'll leave a link directly to this. And what we're going to do is make sure we have Quake uh, bought and installed in Steam. So, basically what this does is it tries to automatically find your Quake Steam folder. Um, but if you need to actually do it manually, just follow this manual installation step here. I didn't have to do this, so I don't think you will have to either if you already have it installed. And then for DLSS, uh, we don't want to use uh, this version. This is a newer version of DLSS, and we want to use an older version to avoid uh, 
So apparently the newer version of DLSS causes ghosting on moving objects and some incorrect uh, lighting with some shadows. So we're going to use an older version. I'll have a link to that too in the description. Uh, but this one here, we're going to actually uh, use that one as well. So the first thing we want to do is when we go to here, we make sure we're on Ray Trace 101. So this is the one I'm using. Since I'm using an NVIDIA card, I have an RTX 3060 Ti. I'm going to use this one. But I think if uh, you're on AMD, you'll probably want to go with this one. But I don't know much about that. So this is the one I'm using. So we're going to go down to Assets, and we're going to hit uh, this one right here. I'm going to click on that and download it. Okay, so we got that. Then we're going to click this one. And then we're going to click this one right here at the top. And then we're going to download that. And excuse my voice, I'm a little sick, so it's kind of hard to talk. So, so once we got that, the only other thing we got to do... Okay, so we're going to open this folder... Okay, so I'm going to extract this to its own folder. So we got that. We're going to extract this to its own folder. So once we got that, the only thing we need now is the DLSS. So I recommend this for people using NVIDIA cards, but if you're using AMD, an AMD card, you'll already just have FSR already built into this, and you won't have to do anything. So... If you're on an AMD card, you can just skip these steps. So now that we got that, um, we're going to go to the other link. So I'll have a link directly to this version, and this is version 2.26. Uh, the one that they linked in their description here is like version 2.4, and that's the one that causes ghosting issues on moving objects. But this one version does not, since it's an older version. So you'll just click on one of these uh, servers. And it should download the uh, the right DLSS that you need. So this will be version 2.2.6. Now once we got that, we're going to go to Extract to Folder. I'm just going to hit Yes to All because I've already downloaded some of this before. Uh, let's see, where did it put it? Oh yeah, it's down here, I think. Oh, okay, I don't know where that went. Extract. Okay, there we go. So now we got the file. So all you'll need to do is with uh, the ray trace GL, you'll just take this, cut it, throw it in the uh, Quake RT folder, paste it, and uh, say replace file in destination. Yes. And we're going to take the uh, DLSS version, take this file here, the DLL, DLL and we're going to uh, cut that. And we're going to paste it in here, and uh, it should, usually it should ask you, uh, it may ask you to uh, replace file, just say yes if it does. Um, so now that'll have the uh, ray tracing work. Uh, it'll work in the, the game. So now I can get rid of this folder and delete it. And we're going to delete this one. And then this should actually work right out of the box. So once you hit this, it'll create a new folder. It should ask, it'll say something like this. Uh, if it does ask you, uh, just hit more info and run anyways. It's totally fine. Uh, once this file comes up, is what this is basically doing is it's... Uh, it's trying to find your uh, Quake folder in your Steam uh, install path. So make sure you have Steam installed and you have your copy of Quake installed as well. And it should have no problem finding that when you hit yes. So the game should run. And you can go into options. Go to HUD options. Set up your uh, resolution. Right here you can turn on Ray Trace or Classic, or the F key in game to toggle between them. And for you AMD users, you can select your uh, desired AMD FSR. But since I'm on video, I prefer the 
the game will uh, control just like an old fashioned quake. And that's how you get it running. So now that we got that done, uh, if you want to go in and modify any of the, uh, like the brightness, if you find that the game is too bright with all the RT stuff turned on, uh, just go into the main folder of your RT quake. Go to 1D1. So this file, this folder will actually be created after you've hit yes on when it's asking for missing files. So after it finds your uh, your Quake uh, folder within Steam, this file will be created after you start the game with uh, VK Quake EXE. So you want to go in here, you go to this config file, open that. Then in here you can change a bunch of stuff, but I wouldn't mess with too much in here. You might mess something up. So the only thing we're looking here to change the brightness is you'll want to look under I believe it's see let's see, it should be RT. Now RT flashlight, what this one does is I believe it creates a small kind of cone of light in front of you. So if you turn, if you select this and change it to one and then hit file and save, uh, that'll actually create a flashlight in front of you essentially, but I would leave it off. Some people might like that, I don't know. But the one thing we're looking here is if you want to change the brightness of the game, RT Global Light Multiplier, uh, this will actually determine essentially the bloom and glow of lights in the game. So you'll want to change this anything from uh, 10 to 1. Anywhere between 10 and 1 is good. I find that 8 is a great value. It's a nice balance. Um, so we'll just change this to an 8. And then hit File and Save. And that'll save uh, all the settings, basically. Now, somewhere in here, you can actually change that water from being you know, neon green, there is a way to change that. So I don't know, just you might have to look into that, but you can change resolution from here as well. So if you're having trouble with that and your refresh rate, you can change it here as well. We're going to save, and that'll update. So now you should be all set to play the game. And now once you have this folder created, you can uh, copy it or cut it and paste it into your program files or put it on a hard drive or whatever. Uh, and it should work. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys uh, learned something, and happy playing Quake. I'll see you in the next video.